Hello everybody. Welcome to Ophthalmology Mastery Clinical Skills for MBBS Students. In this video, we'll learn about examination of a case of corneal ulcer. What are the salient features that you have to look for? And what are the common questions uh, that uh, the examiners will ask? Okay, so history obviously like any other case history you will ask about all this the say and the common uh, complaints in a case of corneal ulcer would be pain since how many days duration you will ask uh, then they usually uh, present with first pain then followed by blurring of vision and the patient then notices whitish lesion on the black of the eye uh, uh, a keen patient or a, a observant patient might notice this so the most common complaints are pain and blurring of vision so the histopi uh, history of presenting illness would be patient was apparently well a few days ago when he or she had an injury to right eye or left eye depending upon the history with a stick or foreign body fall into the eye please remember corneal ulcer cannot just happen uh, inherently okay there has to be some preceding trauma uh, there has to be some injury and following that an uh, uh, infection happens here um, there might be questions, uh, the examiners might ask you, what are the organisms that penetrate an intact corneal epithelium, where there is no injury, but probably a conjunctivitis and um, corneal ulcer happens. So, you need to know there are only five organisms, which, which are Neisseria gonorrhoeae, Neisseria meningitis, Cornibacterium diphtheria, uh, Listeria species and H. influenza. So, these are the questions that might be asked. So, following the injury, the patient notices pain and redness since when? Since the day of injury, you will tell. Uh, in, this is the typical history in case of bacterial keratitis. But in case of fungal keratitis, there will be trauma. So, the patient will have redness, pain and redness, but which reduces after a few days. And then again, after a week, it again, the patient again starts experiencing pain and redness. So, is the the symptoms are not very severe from the beginning in fungal keratitis, but symptoms in case of bacterial keratitis are very severe and immediate. So, that is the typical history that the patients present with. Then you will ask for aggravating and relieving factors for pain, what uh, increase whether any taking any medication increases, um, reduces the pain or exposure to sunlight increases the pain or uh, when they sleep the pain reduces or increases. So, these things you have to ask. Then the, usually the pain is associated with redness and watering so the patient will complain that they notice pain and immediately along with that they notice redness and watering of the eye uh, blurred vision the next uh, symptom is a blurred vision that the patient presents with so patient notice so initially pain starts and then they notice the blurred vision so patients notice a blur, a blurring of vision few days or immediately after pain started Blurring has been increasing or improving, you have to say that. And any diurnal variation also has to be noted. Okay, then the whitish lesion. So, the three symptoms. The third symptom is a whitish lesion on the black of the eye. So, you will describe that also. Patient notice whitish lesion on the black of the eye, which has been increasing size and increasing in size and reach the present size. Okay, so if they don't, don't complain, uh, you don't have to ask that. Right? Negative history. You will ask whether they have photophobia because uh, kar keratitis will be associated with some amount of your uh, uveitis, idocyclitis, and so they will have um, ciliary spasm and photophobia. Discharge, whether there's mucoid or uh, serous or mucopillin discharge. The other history that you, it is important and pertinent to ask is watering prior to injury. So, why would you ask if they had any watering prior to the history of injury? So, to rule out chronic diacrosis status. So, a patient who has chronic diacrosis status, has a mild trauma, abrasion on the cornea, can um, result in a corneal uh, ulcer. So, you have to ask for these histories. Then, ophthalmic history is an issue of use of drops, misuse of steroid eye drops. Some of them for allergic conjunctivitis, they were prescribed some steroid eye drops and they continue to use it. They can end up with fungal keratitis, so you have to ask that. Or herpetic keratitis are again, they are given steroids for a long duration of time. Dry eyes, sometimes they are given uh, steroids. These are predisposing factors, risk factors for uh, corneal ulcer. You have to ask for that. Any surgery, did the patient undergo any surgery, corneal, I mean, cataract surgery or any uh, corneal tear. So, you have to ask for that and any history of uh, spectacle use. Past history and family history, same thing, diabetes, because they are more prone for developing infections. 
hypertension and bronchial asthma you will ask bronchial asthma again steroids um, uh, steroid use uh, usually systemic steroid use will not cause any um, um, corneal ulcers but of course there might be some if uh, they are immunosuppressed there might be uh, they might be at an increased risk of developing uh, infections anywhere else in the body and also corneal infections right so the in the examination you will uh, you will do a detailed examination we, we will only talk about uh, important uh, examination the visual acuity is a must in every patient you will start with visual acuity distant visual acuity and pinhole you will mention about it and if it is vision is only hand movements positive please don't forget to mention perception of light and projection of rays conjunctiva you will mention about the conjunctival congestion and circumcorneal condition corneal also can have both of them so you will talk about it then cornea size shape surface sensations and opacity the five um, um, more than opacity transparency that you will look for then you describe the corneal ulcer you will describe the corneal ulcer as size of the corneal ulcer the shape the location the margin okay all of them are important uh, so size you will measure the vertical i mean the lo the longest di di diameter in both the dimensions and measure and present it 4 by 6 mm shape whether it's oval circular round or it is an irregular you will mention about it location whether it's in center involving the pupillary area paracentral between the pupillary area and the periphery or it's only peripheral so you will mention that and the margin whether it's rounded margin usually seen in bacterial ulcers or feathery margin seen in case of fungal ulcers you may so and the depth usually on torch light examination you will not be able to comment about depth so that you will require slit lamp examination so based on this you will say a 4 by 6 mm paracentral irregular corneal ulcer with rounded margin seen in the nasal quadrant this is how you have to present a corneal ulcer then what else will you talk about sometimes uh, the epithelial defect okay so how uh, the epithelial defect might be larger than the corneal infiltrate so you'll comment about it the color of the infiltrate whether it's yellowish greenish blackish whitish surrounding stromal edema the surrounding stroma might corneal stroma might be not showing uh, infiltration but might be showing corneal edema and the hazy cornea so you comment about that too and satellite lesions some ulcers like fungal keratitis will have satellite lesions like these and they'll have a immune um, an immune ring a wesley's immune ring might also be seen so you will mention about the epithelial so infiltrate size is 4 by 5 but the epithelial defect is 6 by 7 you will comment about it color of the infiltrate yellowish whitish or blackish or greenish surrounding stromal edema about 1 mm around the infiltrate satellite lesions count them count them number and present and uh, comment about it immune ring whether it's present or absent okay so how finally how will you comment about describe the corneal ulcer a 4 by 6 mm paracentral irregular ulcer with rounded margin seen in the nasal quadrant or inferior nasal quadrant with an epithelial defect extending 1 mm beyond the infiltrate the infiltrate is yellowish surrounding cornea shows stromal edema with two satellite lesions and a immune ring is seen so this is a complete description of a corneal ulcer so exam further after that after describing the cornea you will talk about the anterior chamber anterior chamber hypopian pus in the uh, anterior chamber so you will see pus in the anterior chamber between the cornea and the iris okay so you will see in the lower part when you see from front size of the papayon uh, you will measure it with a ruler and approximately say 2 mm 3 mm covering half of the uh, anterior chamber okay and you will comment about the meniscus the meniscus is the uppermost margin of the fluid right so whether it is straight or it is convex you will mention about it so usually straight or convex straight is seen in bacterial ulcers and convex is seen in fungal ulcers so you will it will give you an idea of what kind of ulcer you are dealing with
okay then the iris if you can see the iris you will come and usually there is idocyclitis so it will be muddy you will not be able to identify the architecture of the iris properly if it is prolapsed if there's a perforation like in this case there's a perforation and iris is prolapsed and plug the corneal ulcer you will comment about it okay then pupil if you can see through the ulcer you'll comment about it usually it will not be briskly reacting it will be sluggish it will be uh, constricted it will not be dilated so you will comment about it so you have to be able to on clinical examination and history and clinical examination you should be able to differentiate between bacterial keratitis and fungal keratitis because this is one of the most common questions that are asked where bacterial keratitis usually is a foreign body fall whereas fungal keratitis there is vegetative matter injury okay bacterial keratitis more acute onset injury happen immediately they present with symptoms whereas fungal keratitis it's a sub acute onset there is injury but they present to you after almost one week or 10 days later bacterial keratitis symptoms are more than signs you might see a very small ulcer but the patient is in severe pain whereas fungal keratitis you patient is okay i mean it's comfortable not like writhing in pain when he comes to you but you see the corneal ulcer is almost involving the half of the cornea or sometimes even the complete cornea but is not in severe pain so signs are more than symptoms the ulcer margins are rounded in the case of bacterial keratitis and fungal keratitis they are feathery margins that you see right what are the other differences ulcer surface is more necrotic and you know mm, whereas in ulcer uh, surface in fungal keratitis is dry looking uh, ulcer or a wash leather slough uh, a leather slough that's how we describe it epithelial defect is larger than the infiltrate in bacterial keratitis whereas in fungal keratitis the infiltrate is larger than the epithelial defect the epithelial defect will be healing but the infiltrate is extending in the stroma beyond the uh, epithelial defect satellite lesions or vesely's immune ring are absent in bacterial keratitis but they are present in fungal keratitis hypopion has a flat meniscus in bacterial keratitis and hypopion has a sorry not flat meniscus it's a, a convex meniscus in fungal keratitis so diagnosis finally after examining everything after taking the history you present as diagnose of right or left eye location central paracentral or peripheral etiology bacterial or fungal based on your clinical examination on complications any impending perforation desmetosis or secondary glaucoma you will present so the final diagnosis why it could be right eye central corneal ulcer probably of fungal etiology or probably or bacterial etiology that's how or if there is an impending perforation with an impending perforation probably of fungal etiology so that's how we we'll present what is the management the next thing you have to write your management so next uh, my, my management would include the investigations and treatment investigation slit lamp examination to rule out to understand the depth now uh, the uh, depth of the corneal ulcer and any other complications iop measurement whether there is any associated glaucoma you, how will you check iop in case of corneal ulcers obviously you can't do aplanation you will do non contact tonometry right fundus examination how would you know whether it's involved the fundus you cannot see you cannot do fundoscopy if the corneal ulcer is small yes fundoscopy can be done if not b scan ultrasonography has to be done then the most important in any case of corneal ulcer is to send the corneal scrapings you have a clinical diagnosis but you have to confirm it so for that you will send the corneal scrapings for gram stain koh mount okay if you think it's a uh, fungal keratitis you send it for koh mount if you think it's a bacterial keratitis you send for uh, gram stain and culture blood agar chocolate agar for bacterial and subrots agar for fungal um, where will you uh, so they will ask you where how will you take the corneal scrapings you have to say that the scrapings are taken from using a 23 gauge needle or a kimura spatula from the edges or from the base of the ulcer so that's where you'll get the maximum uh, yield of uh, organisms okay and this so this is what is done and then start the patient is started on treatment so management includes specific measures and non specific measures uh, the specific measures are antibiotics for bacterial ulcers and antifungals for fungal ulcers right so bacterial would be a broad spectrum antibiotic like moxifloxacin but if the ulcer is very large 
that is larger than 6 mm or extending to the limbus you will start with fortified uh, antibiotics for gram positive organisms cefazolin 5% gram negative topramycin 1.4% these are concentrated why, why, why do we say fortified these are not available commercially and you fortify you con give a concentrated drug dose so that the organ the uh, drug reaches the organisms and acts on them for fungal keratitis you will give natamycin 5% for filamentous fungi and amphotericin b 0.015% for candida Voriconazole is uh, acts on both filamentous and non-filamentous fungi. These alone are not enough for non-specific measures are very important for the treatment of um, corneal ulcers. Cycloplegic to reduce the pain, atropin and homatropin can be given or omatropin can be given. Why are they given? To reduce the pain to, by relieving the ciliary spasm. They dilate the pupil so break the sinicae and reduce the uh, incidence of angle closure glaucomas. Anodyne action, they also help in penetration. Uh, uh, they give some um, pain relief and also help in increasing the penetration of other drugs, antibiotics or antifungals. Uh, if there is an in, uh, increase in intraocular pressure, you will give anti-glaucoma medication. You will give anti-inflammatory systemic, not topical, systemic to re relieve the pain and dark goggles to reduce photophobia. Please don't say that you will patch the eye because any infection in the eye you will not patch because it will promote uh, further increase in the infection. So you will not do that, right? Then uh, when will you start? The other question would be when will you start systemic antibiotics or antifungus? So when the ulcer is extending to the limbus or if the ulcer is deep and extending full thickness involving the anterior chamber then you will give systemic antibiotics or systemic antifungals too. <clears throat> so the management is something like this. Medic first always you will start with medical management, specific measures and non-specific measures. Non-specific measures is the same for both bacterial and uh, fungal keratitis. Specific measures if it's bacterial you will start with antibiotics, if it's fungal it is, you will start with antifungals. Then depending upon the uh, how the ulcer responds, if there is healing or there is impending perforation or ulcer progresses, sometimes ulcer might progress to the limbus or this perforation with the uh, uh, iris prolapsing like, as you see here. So depending upon that, the further management will depend. If ulcer heals with the scar, so you give continue the medical management, ulcer heals with the scar, then you will do optical keratoplasty after 3 to 4 months. If there is an impending perforation, you will probably put a glue. You will put a cyanoacrylate glue and prevent the perforation if, if it is small. If it is a larger perforation, then you will do patch graft. If it is a ulcer has progressed to the limbus, you cannot just do patch graft. You have to do a complete total keratoplasty uh, to remove the infection, to reduce the infection, infectious load. So after all that, once they heal with all these things, then you plan for optical keratoplasty at a later date to improve the vision. The first, this stage of management is to save the globe, to reduce the infection. Once that happens, then you will think about improving the vision, which is optical keratoplasty at a later stage. So in summary, you will talk about history. History gives you a very good uh, indication of whether it's a bacterial or a fungal examination you will describe the ulcer uh, visual acuity is very important and after that you will describe the ulcer based on the size location margin depth satellite lesions or immune ring and hypopion which will also help you to identify whether it's a bacterial or a fungal management investigations uh, which is important you have to know about gram stain and koh the questions might be asked about how would you do a gram stain how would you do a koh mount and treatment both specific and non-specific measures are very important and complications might also be asked and how do you manage each complication which is um, we would we didn't expect you to describe every uh, step of keratoplasty but at least you need to know what is what is the when would you advise keratoplasty in a corneal ulcer thank you very much